All right, so let's talk woodworking jigs. Jigs make a job so much easier, so much better, and they're very versatile in what you need them to do. Now, they can be as complicated or as simple as you want to make them. I like doing them simple. Easy squeezy, a lemon peasy. And so here's an example that was in my last video of a very simple jig that I used to do the timber frame for the birdhouse feeders. If you haven't seen that video, it's a very good video. A lot of people seem to think so, as do I. The way that I typically do jigs is I find scrap wood that I need and I'll tack up the jig that I need and use that jig for the woodworking project. This could be a tapering jig. This can be a multi bulk cutting jig, whatever you would call it, whatever you need it to be. A woodworking jig is a very versatile tool and it's very good for you to know how to make one. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I made this one using only scrap wood. It doesn't have to be fancy. Nothing wrong with it being fancy, but it doesn't have to be. And it doesn't have to be expensive either. So with the scrap piece of plywood, let's talk layout. How do I start laying out my jig? There's a couple ways to do it. Number one, you could cut your piece out on the miter saw or on the table saw and then trace what you need, which is how I made the last one. But a more reliable way would be to actually lay it out with measuring tools. To do that, I'm going to use a speed square and you can lay out your angles using a speed square. So on your speed square, there is a pivot point right here at this intersection. When you pivot this, this line here will show you what angle you're pivoting it on. So I want to go to 30 degrees. I'm going to set that line to line up with the edge of my work surface. This line will be the line I trace for 30 degrees. So I'm going to pull this back to about where I want to have the fence at. I'm going to pivot this to 30 degrees and I'm going to trace my line. So there you can see I have a line that is 30 degrees. That's what I'm going to set my fence on and I'm going to screw the fence onto this. Here we have a woodworker in his natural environment screwing down a fence for a jig. Truly inspiring. More inspiring is he will use that cutoff and he will butt the 30 degree angle previously cut against the fence he just installed. He will then cut off the excess again and that will complete his down and dirty jig. And so here I'm testing it and it just works out perfect every time. I cannot explain enough how easy this will make your job, your workload. It will increase your speed. It'll decrease your work time. It'll make the shop way more enjoyable. So here I'm just making all my test cuts again and they came out just exactly the way that they're supposed to. Okay, so using the same method that we laid out the perimeter of the bird feeder, we're now gonna do this piece here. This tip right here is at 60 degrees and it lines up in the center of that post. So I'm gonna take my speed square, I'm gonna repeat the steps that I did earlier, angle it to 60 degrees on the outside surface area, and then I'm gonna make a mark. But I'm gonna do this to where the next piece that I lay out is going to go on top or on the opposite side of this fence. 60 degrees. We're going to mark. Uh, 60 degrees. We're going to mark it. We're going to take the cutoff that I had earlier. Again, scrap wood. And I am going to... Give me enough room to hold it over here. Lay that out and screw it down. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you know better ways to do this. There are better ways to do this. This is just how I do it. Some of you are going to comment, you're kind of dead there. Why didn't you do that? My only reply if you have a better way, start a YouTube channel and show us the better way. Repeating the same way we did earlier, we're going to cut off this excess. This is going to give us our 
60 degree angle to be able to cut the center post. And so one thing to note that kind of helps you skip a step, I set this fence to where it acts as the backer for the back side of the center post. It's the approximate length that I want the center post to be. So when I make my first cut, I want to put the one inch strip on the back side of this closest to me. So the, the jig will be facing this way. I want the one inch strip closest to me. That gives me more leverage to hold it or even to put a stopper or a holder there. I don't really want to hold it up here because I don't want my fingers that close to the blade. I have more control holding it against the back side of here. So this is my stop block for the length of the post that I want. It's approximately the length that I want. I will final that up once I trace it inside of the actual peak itself. This is just to get it approximately where I want it to be. You can work on it and get it exactly the length that you want it to be. I'm just not interested in spending that much time on it right now. So let's make our first cut with the one inch strip. And so that gives me the perfectly centered peak that I need to go inside right here. And it's also, honestly, I got lucky. It happens to be the exact length that I need. That cuts your center post and it works great. The other pieces for the timber frame bird feeder right here, 55 degree angle, 25 degree angle. I find it's easiest to cut that on a sled made for the miter saw. It's real simple, same technique, draw out a line, nail your fence down, clamp it to the miter saw and cut your angles. If you haven't seen that, go check out my last video where I actually did it. I don't think I have anything else to show you. This sled is actually working better than my first sled that I used in my last video. One other thing, I did not put a track at the bottom. Haven't done that because I don't want to spend a lot of time making these. The way that I set it, I will butt this up against the table saw blade and I will slowly tap my fence into place until it just holds the fence secure until it pulls on the blade just a little bit. That's where I want it every time. As much as you possibly can, do not pull the sled back to you while the blade's running. Run it through, turn the blade off, then you bring your jig back to you. You don't want to pull it backwards while the blade's running because then you really risk kickback. And so this technique works for almost any jig that you need to make. If you're in a bind and you have scrap wood, no matter what type of scrap wood you have, as long as you have enough space to fit your hand without being close to the blade, that you're comfortable with you have what you need to make a jig it could be very 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 simple and it makes life a lot easier and so that is really it that's all there is to it this is probably going to be a very short video because it's a very very simple easy to understand method it's not that hard it's a real quick down and dirty jig system i use it on a lot of projects if i need to get something done quickly I'm not going to take a lot of time to build this nice fancy jig that I really don't have the wall space for anyway to store it. I'm going to use scrap wood that's taking up space. I'm going to use that scrap wood and make a quick jig, make it to where I can take it apart if I need to to make the next jig. That's how I typically do these types of things. I hope this video helps. If it does, hit that like and subscribe button. We really hit a lot of growth lately. I really appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. I really am trying to grow this channel and I'm really trying to provide as much free resources as possible that being said i'm working right now on a new website because my last website was kind of finicky and a lot of people weren't able to find the plans i've had to email a lot of people i've had to re re reinstate the directions multiple times and people are still having issues finding it so i am going to start a new website and it is going to be in blog format so where i'm going to provide you all of my plans for free so we're going to start providing plans like we did with the birdhouse feeder. That's going to be available for free. I'm currently learning SketchUp. There will be pictures associated along with the cut list here in the future. I got a few things I got to get in place first, but the plans are coming. Let me know in the comments what type of projects you would like to see free plans for. And I'm going to work on creating those plans along with the video, and I'm going to keep it available to you for free. So that being said,
there will be advertisers. There will be sponsors because I do want to keep this channel going. I do want to get money coming in to support it by camera because I'm using my phone right now, by an actual microphone because I'm using IsoTunes for my microphone. It works, but it's still kind of finicky. I want to upgrade the system. I want to upgrade the channel, upgrade the shop, stuff like that. And I want to take you along every step of the way. So thank you again for the support. I really hope this helps. I really appreciate the comments, the feedback I've been getting. Let me know what projects you want to plan for, and I will do the best I can to make it happen. And to make it happen for free to you. Thank you, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.